Welcome to lesson number one of seventh grade. How did ancient China's political system change over time? Ancient China is an extraordinarily interesting topic, and uh, this will be the first of many lessons where we explore one of the great cultures in world history. First thing we need to do before we start learning about ancient China's government is understand certain vocabulary words that are necessary for us to know in order to understand China. The first of these words is political. If we're going to talk about the political development of China, we need to know that political means having to do with the government. So we're going to be learning how the government of China has changed over time. Uh, another important word to understand is dynasties. Uh, a dynasty is a ruling family. So when you have a lot of members of the same family ruling an empire for a long period of time, that is called a dynasty. And dynasties are extremely important in Chinese history, as we will be learning. Another important word to understand is aristocracy. Uh, wealthy landowners that have special privileges in society because of their wealth are known as aristocrats. And aristocrats make up what we call the aristocracy. And there's also something called a meritocracy. And this is, I believe, a good thing. Uh, this means rule by officials who have proved their merit. So another way of putting that is not just anybody gets to do the jobs that run the government, but people that prove they're loyal and prove that they know what they're doing and they are competent. Uh, that means they know what they're doing. So a meritocracy is rule by officials who prove their merit and know what they're doing. Um, these words are outside of our normal vocabulary list, which is why I'm emphasizing them here. So we're going to talk about how this whole system of dynasties began in China. Uh, and the first dynasty uh, started as a result of a gentleman by the name of Prince Zhang. In 221 BCE, which stands for Before Common Era, Prince Zhang ruled over most of what we now consider to be China, and he declared himself to be emperor. And he is widely considered to be the first ever emperor of China. So, if you ever get a Trivial Pursuit question, who was the first emperor of China? The answer is Prince Zhang. Uh, emperors usually declared their son or firstborn to come after them. So, if Prince Zhang had a son, his son would become emperor when he died. The only difference there would be is if he didn't have any sons and he only had daughters, then his eldest daughter would become empress. And that handing power from one family member to another is something we call succession. Uh, and that is a vocabulary word. Succession is when one family member takes power from another upon the death of the older family member. Uh, these families of rulers were considered to have what was called the mandate of heaven. Uh, the concept of the mandate of heaven is very important in Chinese history. Essentially, that means that the gods above have decided that your family has the right to rule over China. Uh, and as long as you lead honorably and lead well, you will continue to hold the mandate of heaven. But if you don't lead honorably or you don't lead well, then you will lose the mandate of heaven and another family will get to take your place. And the Chinese very much did and do uh, to some degree still today, believe this. So, uh, if the line of succession was broken, if there were no heirs to the throne, um, the family was considered to have, to have lost the right to rule and therefore to have lost uh, what we call the mandate of heaven. Um, and if you're a dynasty, that's, that's generally not a good thing. And that period between one dynasty and another tended to be very chaotic, uh, which we will learn about when we learn about the first major dynasty in China. So this is the first major dynasty in China, known as the Han Dynasty. 
Uh, and why was the Han Dynasty important? That would be your left side question in your Cornell notes. Uh, the Han Dynasty was important mainly because it was the first dynasty, but there were some things that happened during that time. Also, please note that the Han Dynasty did not control all of what we consider to be modern day China. It only controlled the eastern portion of it, minus these areas in white and minus these areas in white over here. So roughly half, a third to half of what we now consider to be China. Uh, the Han Dynasty lasted for more than 400 years. Uh, and if you want to put that in perspective, the United States of America is now basically 240 years old, uh, 1776 to 2016. So 400 years is nothing to look down your nose at. Uh, the Chinese actually look down their nose at us because our history is so short. They, they measure history in millennia, thousands of years, whereas we measure history in centuries, and we've only been around two plus centuries at this point. So something to consider when you compare and contrast the history of China and the history of the United States. Uh, the Han Dynasty lasted until 220 CE, which is the Common Era. Sometimes that's also referred to as AD. So 220 after the year zero. Uh, so the Han Dynasty started before the year zero and ended in 220 CE. In fact, that sounds like an exquisite reason to show you a timeline of the Han Dynasty. At the point when the Han Dynasty started to come to an end, corrupt relatives and servants of the emperor started to try and seize power. Uh, one thing that is very common throughout history, and not just China, is when one group of people or one family is in power for a very long time, they tend to get corrupt and lazy over time because they start to think that they're entitled to power, that because they've always had power, they always will have power, and they stop doing things like ruling well or looking after the actual interests of the people. And when that happens, things tend to slide downhill rather quickly. Um, you could say there's some parallels in our world today of similar things happening, but um, I'll just leave that hanging there for the time being. Uh, warlords, which is also a vocabulary word, warlords were military leaders who controlled a specific area in China, and they were outside the control of the emperor. So warlords had their power because they controlled the soldiers and the emperor lost the ability to tell the warlords what to do. So these warlords rose up and they opposed the emperor and so different warlords controlled different parts of China. So they controlled their local areas or local sections of the country and they also fought each other. So instead of being a military that was unified, that obeyed the emperor and that kept the country together, they started fighting against each other. And Newsflash, kids, that's generally not a good thing if you're trying to run a country. In fact, a good example of that would be Afghanistan. Uh, and I know Mr. Conwell has some um, opinions based on his own experience on what warlordism did to the country of Afghanistan. Uh, they also had high taxes during the Han Dynasty. Uh, and the more you pay in taxes, the less money you have to take care of your own business. So finding that sweet spot where you have enough tax income to run the government, where you still let people have enough of their own money that they can take care of their own business, that's generally what you want to try and do. If you overtax the people, then they don't have enough to take care of their own needs, and they tend to get mad at you for taking their money away in taxes. And that's what happened in China. Um, they, the landowners were taxed highly. They couldn't pay their bills. They went bankrupt. And so then they had to sell their farms to the aristocrats who were already rich. So you had a, a, an ever-growing gap between the rich in China and the very, very poor in China. Uh, and anytime you have a huge gap between the rich and the poor, and the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, things don't tend to go well. Uh, again, you might be able to see some parallels in the modern world, but I'm going to leave that hanging out there. 
So at this point, corrupt officials, warlords tearing the country apart, the Han dynasty fell apart and lost what was considered the mandate of heaven. And there was a period of instability in China, uh, which was only resolved when the next dynasty came to power. But I'm going to leave that as a teaser for the next lesson, because I think this is enough for one YouTube video. So at this point, if you're taking Cornell notes, which I know you are, now would be a brilliant time to write a three to five sentence summary of what you've learned about the political system of China, of dynasties, uh, of what makes up a dynasty, of what the Han Dynasty was, and what caused the Han Dynasty to fall apart. And if you can do that, you've probably learned what's essential about today's lesson. Lesson two is coming to a classroom near you soon, kids. Hopefully you've enjoyed lesson one. This is Mr. Blumendahl signing off for the very first seventh grade YouTube video. I hope you've enjoyed it.